Hi, boys and girls. Um, I hope you enjoyed the last story, My Rotten Redheaded Older Brother. Um, and I want you to think about how is that story similar and different to the first two. Thank you, Mr. Falker and um, Junkyard Wonders. Um, there definitely are some similarities, but the story did take um, kind of a different turn. Um, and the focus of the story was a little different that time. So I want you to think about how it was different and um, what do you notice? Okay. Um, the story we're going to read today is called Rotten Richie and the Ultimate Dare. Okay, so we already met Richie, didn't we? Um, so what do you know about him? What do you know about Richie? And then a dare. I want you to think, what is a dare? And what does it mean if someone dares you to do something? But then here they have the word ultimate. What does it mean if there's an ultimate dare? And how do you think that's going to play into the story? Our mom loved us both more than anything. She always told us. She saw to, to it that Richie could play hockey on the junior team and I could take ballet at Miss Barnett's ballet school. Richie had his precious old hockey team, but ballet was my life. Even Miss Barnett said I showed great promise. What I loved about ballet class was Richie wasn't there. Hmm. Wonder how these things are gonna play into the story. As if life wasn't bad enough, having to endure my rotten redheaded older brother all summer, my mom, brother, and I had to move away from grandma and grandpa's farm in Union City to Battle Creek to be closer to mom's teaching job. Now I was going to be the new kid at school, but even worse than that, my rotten brother was going to be in the same school as I was. He was the black hole in my universe, the embarrassment of my life, the frog in my punch bowl, the spider in my cereal, the wart on my cookie, the slug in my jello, the snake in my soup. In other words, this new school was going to be a disaster, all because of him. So what's she trying to say here? He's the embarrassment to her life. He's the frog in her punch bowl. He's the slug in her jello. What do you think about what she's saying? I mean, he picked his nose and looked at it. He chewed with his mouth open. He spat when he talked and he made rude noises with his armpits. And odor. My rotten redheaded older brother stank. He reeked of stale bubble gum mixed with rancid peanut butter and putrid gym socks with overtones of wet puppy. Mm. At school, he was everywhere. Our first day at Fremont Elementary School, Richie put fake dog poop in the middle of the hall floor. He even poured water on it so it looked real. Then he stood and watched as the whole school was plastered against the walls, trying to walk around it. He'd struck again. Then just as I passed, he hollered, Hey, look, there's my sister. I wanted to die. So we already heard a little bit about Richie in the last story and how he's a jokester and he likes to tease his sister and kind of challenge her to things. But what did we just learn about Richie? I'm kind of student is here. What kind of kid is he in school? As time passed, I managed to make some good friends. After all, they knew it wasn't my fault to have someone like Richie in my family. One night at the dinner table, I was telling mom about ballet class and our upcoming recital. I heard the mayor will be there. His daughter dances at Miss Barnett's and mama Miss Barnett picked me to do the special adiagio with Paul LeBlanc, I squealed. He's the best dancer in the whole school. My brother snorted and rolled his eyes. Look, Mama, I could do a Grand Tourgette and a Ronde de Jamelaire and almost 36 releves. I got up and demonstrated. Mom clapped and cheered. Ah, I can do that with my eyes closed, Richie croaked. You cannot, I protested. Can too, he countered. Can not, I screamed. Too, he said with a sneer. 
Well, ballet is harder than dumb old hockey any day, I hollered. Is not. All hockey is is skating around in circles with a crooked stick chasing a little lump of rubber. Babies could do that, I bellowed. Stop it, both of you, Mom scolded. What difference does it make as long as, both, as you are both doing what you enjoy? All the rest of the evening, Richie danced around me on his tippy toes, making rude sounds. Tweet, tweet, he teased. And just before I got into bed, he stuck his head in my doorway and made kissing sounds and said, Trish is in love with Paul LeBlanc. Tweet, tweet, tweet. The next morning at school, I could hear his weaselly voice echo down the hallways. He was telling his greasy little friends on the hockey team about my doing a ballet duet with Paul LeBlanc. Then they all laughed and made tweeting sounds and danced around on their tippy toes. They kept it up all day long. Finally, I had enough. At recess, my two friends from ballet class and I marched up to Richie and his friends on the hockey team. What do you think she's going to say to him? Oh, Richie, I cooed, if you think ballet is so easy, come to my ballet school. Be in my recital. I crossed my arms and waited for his answer. Richie's friends chuckled, but they were watching Richie to see what he would do. Hmm, is all he could manage to say. I dare you, I said defiantly as a crowd gathered around us. Richie's eyes darted around nervously. So can you imitate what Richie would be doing right now if his eyes are darting around nervously? And why is he so nervous? Now I had him. I double dare you, I added as I drew up nose to nose. His friends snapped to attention. They all eyed Richie. Richie just stood there snorting and steaming at me. What does it mean if he's steaming at her? I triple dog dare you with skin dues and two ups, I sneered. His friends reeled in disbelief. I had breached etiquette in passing double dog dare and going directly to the triple with skin dues and two ups. Now there was no way out for him. He had to accept. He kicked the ground. Well, he muttered. Then his eyes narrowed. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I looked triumphant as everyone cheered. Richie and his teammates suddenly dropped to a close huddle. They whispered for a time and then they all looked at me. On one condition, Richie leered. What's his condition gonna be? What do you think he wants? I'll go to your dumb old ballet classes and learn your dumb old dances and be in your stupid recital, but only if you l practice with the team and play one game with us. His teammates glared at him. I thought for a moment, after all, I had poise, great balance, endless stamina. Ballet had given me all of that, and hockey was only skating, and I loved to skate. What could be so hard about this? Okay, dog breath, you're on, I heard myself saying. Do you think she meant to say that? Okay, twerp, our game is next week, so you'll have a week to practice. No sweat burlap, I shot back. You'll have a month to practice for the recital. Richie got permission from his coach and the league to let me practice and play just one game. I guess it wasn't easy, but he managed to do it. I practiced hard all week. The next week, all of Fremont Elementary was there for the game, even Mr. Thomas, the principal. He and all of the teachers were in the front row, and I was a little nervous. The coach's wife helped me suit up in the closet of the locker room. Geez, this stuff is heavier than it looks, I said. Well, dear, this is a contact sport. You have to protect your bones from breaking and your teeth from getting knocked out, she said cheerfully. Bones? Teeth? I began to wonder if I had bitten off more than I could chew. What does that mean, bitten off more than I can chew? Hmm, that's figurative language right there. There was a, that was assuming I'd even be able to do that after this game. Do what after the game? 
What's she associating it with? By the time Richie helped me out onto the ice with the rest of the team, I could hardly stand up. But the more I skated around, the better I felt. A whistle blew and everyone cheered for our team, the Battle Creek Beavers. I raised my hand to wave and fell flat on my behind. It was slippery out there. One of the beavers helped me up. That's when I saw the team we were playing against explode onto the ice. My, my stomach turned. The Saginaw Sonics, each and every one of them must have weighed 400 pounds. Face off, the referee called out as the two captains faced off. They looked real mean at each other. The referee was about to drop the puck between them. Where do I go, Richie? I called out to my brother down the line. Just stay out of the way. When that puck hits the ice, the race is on. Then the ref dropped it. There was a blur of sticks, flashing jerseys, and pinging skate blades. I headed straight for the wall to hang on. I saw the puck heading for me. It bounced off the wall and stopped right next to me. I just stood and looked at it. Should she just stand and look at it? What should she do? Hit it! Hit it! The beavers yelled at me. I heard what sounded like a locomotive and saw the Saginaw Sonics closing in. Boom! They plastered me against the wall. Their sticks zinged, banged, and cracked as they tried to get the puck. Finally, a whistle blew and they piled off of me. All that padding sure didn't seem to help much. You let them body check you, you twerp. I told you to stay out of the way, my brother yelled as he zoomed by. The teams faced off over and over again. Now I knew what to do. Stay away from both teams. I saw Richie line up the perfect shot at the Sonics goal. Just as he was about to slap it in one of the Sonics, put out his stick and tripped him. I steamed right up to that big old Sonic and beamed him with my stick. You're not playing fair, I screamed. I heard a whistle blow. The referee grabbed me, opened the side gate, and threw me onto a bench. Why'd she get thrown on the bench? And why did she do that in the first place? High sticking, he bellowed. Penalty goes against the Beavers. Number 12, five minutes in the box. So that's what was happening. This was sweet. All I had to do was trip a Sonic with my stick and I could be sent to the penalty box. I could stay in here for the whole game. By golly, my plan worked like a dream. I spent almost the entire game in the penalty box. By the third period, the score was 4-4. Our team had played a great game. The Beavers outskated, outshot, and outplayed the Sonics on every front. And just as we were going to score the winning goal, all the Sonics piled into the Beavers and started a fight. When the fight was over, almost all of the Sonics, except the goalie, were in the penalty box. All of the Beavers were, too. You're back out on the ice, 12. Let's go, the ref barked as he opened the door and pushed me out. There I was, all by myself, with that on the ice with the biggest, meanest, ugliest Sonic of all. It was their shot, and I alone had to guard our goal. I hung on to the net for dear life. The crowd was dead silent. The puck was dropped, and the Sonic barreled down the ice, heading straight for me. I heard him take a slap shot. Then I saw him leap into the air and land right on top of the net. He bounced off. Then he just laid there, out cold. What does it mean if he's out cold? That's when I felt it. I had the puck in my hand and he hadn't made the goal. I'd caught it. The crowd exploded. Skate the puck to their goal. You have 30 seconds, do it. I heard my brother yell. I steadied the puck with my stick and pushed it ahead of me as fast as I could. The Sonics goal seemed miles away. The clock was ticking. The crowd was calling out seconds. Then the puck got away from me. I slid back up to it, closed my eyes, and slapped the puck as hard as I could. The buzzer sounded at the end of the game, and it was all over. 
When I opened my eyes, there it was, the puck, smack in the Sonics net. I had scored the winning point. That's my little sister, I heard my brother call out as the crowd roared. Well, I guess I showed Richie all right, I had to admit. Although hockey was not a piece of cake like I thought it would be. But now it was Richie's turn. He had to come to my ballet classes and dance in my recital. Richie was good to his word. He practiced hard and even stopped teasing me about Paul LeBlanc. Finally, the night of the recital arrived. All of Miss Barnett's ballet school students were in a dither. What do you think it means they're in a dither? Richie and I were in the dressing room. I ain't wearing this, he hissed, as I held up his costume. It looks like a flower, and all my friends are going to be there tonight. I had to wear your hockey gear, so you're wearing it, I insisted. Richie complained as we all did our warm-up on the bar. He complained when we put on our stage makeup, and he complained that after all, he was too exhausted to go on. Guess it's not as easy as you thought, huh? I sneered. We peeked out at the curtain. The whole school was there again. Richie turned so red, his freckles almost disappeared. On stage, on stage, people, Mrs. Barnett called out as she clapped her hands. We took our places on stage. The music began and the curtains parted. All of us were in perfect fifth positions. All except, who? Who's not in perfect position? all except Richie. His feet were turned in instead of out, and as we started our dance in unison, he jumped when we glided, he twirled when we leaped, and when we glossaded upstage, he glossaded downstage. When we did our pas de la chat, Richie d hopped around like a rabbit. And at the end of the number, as we all did our grand arabesque, Richie lost his balance and grabbed for the curtain. That's when the audience started to snicker. What does it mean to snicker? What's the audience doing right now? He lost his balance. He grabbed the curtain and the audience started to snicker. The next two numbers went very well because Richie wasn't in them. Richie hid from all of us during the intermission. Then it was time for the next number, the main number of the second part of the recital. Richie was a wood nymph. All he had to do was one single tourjet. Just one. Well, he did it all right and landed right on Paul LeBlanc. Paul LeBlanc lost his balance and fell into a fairy tree. The tree tipped, knocked over a gazebo, and finally fell through the backdrop. What just happened? As we were all doing our twirls across the floor, we knew to watch a spot that, so that we wouldn't get dizzy. Richie didn't know that. He twirled and got so dizzy that this time he grabbed the curtain and almost swung off stage. The audience roared with laughter. The curtain closed for the second intermission. Miss Barnett held her head. Your brother has ruined the entire production, she screeched. Then she collapsed in a heap in the director's chair and glared at me. Miss Barnett, we still have the finale, the Adiagio duet with Paul and me. We have our closing solos, I pleaded. Miss Barnett managed a weak smile, only to be replaced with utter horror as Paul LeBlanc limped toward her. Miss Barnett, I can't do the last number, he wailed. I sprained my ankle when Richie fell on me. I wanted to cry. We all looked at Richie and just shook our heads. Richie saw the tears well up in my eyes. Wait, he called out. I can do Paul's number. Everyone groaned. You've done enough tonight, Richard, Mrs. Barnett said sadly. No, Mrs. Barnett, I really can. I've been practicing all of the steps to help Trisha rehearse. I can do it with my eyes closed. Miss Barnett, maybe he really can, I said. He has been practicing those steps. The grand lift at the end is the only one that still needs work. Please let me try, Richie pleaded. Miss Barnett finally agreed, but no lift at the end.
Paul's costume fit Richie perfectly. He took center stage. The music started and the curtain opened. The audience started to giggle. But as we took our first steps, Richie was in complete unison with me. He lifted me when he was supposed to. He was doing the right steps in the right time with the music. He was actually graceful. The audience wasn't laughing anymore. Then Richie took his pose while I did my solo. I danced around the entire stage and then did 36 consecutive releves across the stage end point. Everyone leapt to their feet and cheered. Then I posed and it was Richie's turn to take Paul's solo. I had no idea what he was going to do. I wasn't sure if he knew all of Paul's dance and to my astonishment, Richie did the highest leaps I had ever seen. The audience clapped and then he was ready for the final pirouette. He pointed, snapped his leg in a jet, and spun. He was a blur. He must have done 10 consecutive turns. I lost count. Richie gestured for me to join him. Paul and I were supposed to do the grand leap here. Richie, we can't do this, I whispered. Come on, kid. Let's give them their money's worth. And he winked. He whirled me around and lifted me above his head. He threw me up and caught me, then spun me out. I ran stage left and did grand jet. As the music built, it was my cue to run and leap into Richie's arms. He was to lift me over his head and hold me there while he spun and hurled me into my last arabesque. My heart was in my throat. I looked at his face, I closed my eyes and ran directly to him. I leapt high into the air. Please don't let Richie mess up, I prayed. I was airborne and I could see Miss Barnett cover her mouth and gasp. I was airborne. What does that mean right now? She's airborne. So what has to happen? Richie caught me. It was perfect. Perfect. We nailed it. The audience jumped to their feet and roared, cheered, and clapped. That's my brother, I heard myself saying. That night, as we sat in front of the fire at home, Richie finally said to me, Okay, okay, ballet is harder than I thought. I really had to practice to do it right. Well, I added, I'd have to say that hockey is way cool and it takes a lot just to play the game. Truce then, slap shot, Richie said, holding out his little finger. Okay, dance king, truce, I said, as we locked our fingers. Richard even admitted to me years later that his short course on ballet helped him on the ice. And the balance it took for me to just stand on skates helped me in dancing, that's for sure. To this day, he still calls me Slapshot, and I still call him Dance King. All right, so um, this is book number four. So now your job is to complete your chart. Characters, setting, um, plot, or the some major events that happened in the story, and then theme. So what do you think the theme of this book is? Um, what does Patricia Polacco want you to think about while you read this story, or after you're done reading the story? Um, and now you have all four books, and I want you to think about all four books that you listen to. Um, and what are the similarities and differences between all four books? And what do you think of Patricia Polacco as an author? Um, what does she use as her inspiration for her stories? Um, where'd she get her ideas from? And are there any things you notice about her as an author that she does really well? Um, things that keep you interested in her stories. Um, so think about it. And you'll have a discussion with your teacher soon. Bye.